Hello everyone, I'm Zach from ZL Productions and welcome to my weapon showcase of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, the OG version that was released back in 2009 for those of you who don't know. For those of you who don't have any patience to watch this intro, go to the timestamp shown on this screen right here. This video will showcase all available weapons that are featured in this game, but this video will not feature any killstreaks. The way I will showcase all weapons will be similar to the way I did it for my Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare Weapon Showcase. I will showcase the weapon, name its real life counterpart with a picture of the real life weapon on screen while testing the weapon in a private match, and name some facts about the weapon while showcasing you gameplay of the weapon in action in a multiplayer or single player if the weapon is exclusive to there. Almost all of the information of the weapons I will be saying in this video is from the Internet Movie Firearms database website and also things from fandom as well. Link to those websites will be in the description. One thing I should mention is that I will be using a couple of attachments for a lot of the weapons in the game. More specifically the FMJ and Extended Mags to make things a little bit easier for me. I will also be using the Akimbo attachment for only two weapons that you will see later in this video. Sorry if you think some of the gameplay is not good, I tried really hard to make sure that this weapon showcase looks really good for all of you out there. A little thing I want to point out is that almost all of the gameplay that was featured in this video is from modded matches, more specifically just modders that turn a regular game into a ground war game. This took a week to get all the footage for this video. I streamed almost 7 hours in a total of a week on Twitch. And the link to my Twitch will be down below in the description. All gameplay shown in this video is recorded on the Xbox One. Timestamps for each weapon will be down below in the description of this video as well. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and turn on notifications so that way you don't miss a single video from me. Let me know in the comments which game I should do a weapon showcase for next. Have fun and enjoy my Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 weapon showcase. The first weapon I will be going over is the knife. The knife isn't modeled after any knife, so here's a picture of a real combat knife. The knife is available in all three modes in Modern Warfare 2. No matter what, you will always be equipped with a knife. The knife is a one-hit kill, but you will have to be up close to your enemies in order to kill them. One addition to Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer is the Tier 3 perk Commando, which greatly increases the knife's lunge range to 176 inches. This makes the knife much easier to use. In single player, NPCs are able to use the knife, although they do it rarely. There are four scripted events where enemies attack with a knife. The first three occurred in The Only Easy Day Was Yesterday, just like old times in Loose Ends, where the player breaches a door and enemy charges at the player with a knife. The other occurrence is when Shepard stabs Soap in the chest after knocking him down during the final mission endgame. The next knife is the Tactical Knife. The Tactical Knife isn't modeled after anything. In multiplayer, the Tactical Knife is a weapon attachment that is first available in the first Recon class, but can later be unlocked by getting 75 kills for the USP-45 and M9 and 100 kills for the 44 Magnum and Desert Eagle. The Tactical Knife attachment allows the character to hold both a pistol and knife at the same time, letting the player to stab as twice as fast. The tactical knife can be used with all handguns, although in single player campaign, it is only used with the USP-45 by default. The ability to knife faster and more frequently is advantageous in close quarters combat. The tactical knife attachment seems to offer no downside whatsoever versus the base weapon, with the exception of increasing the visual recoil on the M9 and USP-45, which may disturb the player's performance. In multiplayer, a common setup for the tactical knife involves the marathon, commando, and lightweight perks, and a pistol of the player's choice with a tactical knife. Many players will abuse Commando Pro's extreme knife lunge range, combined with unlimited sprinting and faster movement than normal players in this fashion to get a large amount of kills. The next and final knife is the throwing knife. 
Once again, it is not modeled after anything and it is fictional. In multiplayer, it is unlocked at level 7. The throwing knife is actually a piece of equipment, but I will count it as a knife. The throwing knife is what you expect, a knife that can be thrown by the player. The throwing knife is a one-hit kill anywhere on the body. It deals the same damage as the regular knife. It is always a one-hit kill unless in a private match where the health is set to double. It also bypasses last stand or final stand and immediately kills the player just like the knife. Players will only receive one knife, however any thrown knife can be retrieved regardless of who threw it. Assuming the player has selected the throwing knife as equipment. It can also be replenished with scavenger. In single player, the throwing knife is only seen at the very end of the game when you use it to kill General Shepard. The throwing knife is also used to get some insane cross maps. Oh! Oh my god! Oh! Oh my god! Oh no! Oh! No! Get the camera! To save a little bit of time, I'm gonna briefly go over the equipment. The first equipment is the frag. The frag is modeled after the M67 frag grenade. The next equipment is the Semtex. The Semtex is a fictional sticky grenade. The next explosive is the Claymore. It is modeled after the M18A1 Claymore. You unlock it in multiplayer at level 31. The Claymore can only explode when an enemy draws near the explosive. The next explosive is the C4. It is modeled after the same one used in Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. It's not modeled after anything. It is unlocked at level 43. The next grenade is the flash grenade. It is modeled after the M84 stun grenade, painted with a green stripe. The next grenade is the stun grenade. It is modeled after the M84 stun grenade, painted with a red stripe. The next and final grenade is the smoke grenade. It is modeled after the M83 smoke grenade. The first handgun in the game is the USP-45. It is modeled after the Heckler & Koch USP-45. 
It is one of the main sidearms used in the Russian forces, including the ultra-nationalist and internal troops, as well as Task Force 141. In single player, the USP is always equipped with a tactical knife attachment. In the multiplayer, the USP is unlocked at level 4 and is a, an effective sidearm overall. It has a magazine capacity of 12 rounds and 18 rounds with the extended magazines attachment. The usage of the USP by the Russians is highly inaccurate, given the Russians' doctrine that he focuses on using domestic weapons, guns like the Makarov PM and the MP443 Garag would have been more accurate. The next handgun is the 44 Magnum. It is modeled after the Colt Anaconda. It appears in both single player and multiplayer. In multiplayer, it is available in the first recon class, but is later unlocked at level 26. It is the signature weapon of Lieutenant General Shepard, which he uses at several key points in the campaign. In a cutscene in Loose Ends, General Shepard pulls out his 44 Magnum to shoot someone, despite the holstered 44 Magnum on his model still being visible in the holster, although he has another big 44 Magnum tucked in the back of his pants. During a cutscene in Endgame, the cylinder rotates counterclockwise when General Shepard pulls the back of the hammer, when, in, when then incorrectly th rotates clockwise again before the gun fires when Shepard pulls the trigger. It is a useful weapon in the multiplayer due to its quick draw, power, and the fact that the 44 Magnum can fire as fast as the player can pull the trigger. It has a capacity of 6 rounds, and as you probably expected, the 44 Magnum is not available with a suppressor or extended magazines as other handguns. Interestingly, the barrel of the 44 Magnum on the weapon's world motto reads Brad Allen Conda, a reference to Brad Allen, the head weapon designer of Infinity Ward. Good. That's one less loose end. shortage of volunteers, no shortage of patriots. I know you understand. The next handgun is the M9. It is modeled after the Beretta 92 SB. It has a capacity of 15 rounds and 25 with extended mags. In single player, it is the primary sidearm of all US troops, Task Force 141, US Navy SEALs, and is infrequently used by the Middle Eastern Op 4 and the Brazilian Militia. In Special Ops, the M9 is the starting weapon in Overwatch, War Driving, Wreckage, Homeland Security, and Body Count. It is also an alternate weapon in the pit and a state takedown. All players, regardless of the faction, pull one out in last stand. This is true of all missions with the exception of the stealth ones. In multiplayer, the M9 is unlocked at level 46. The M9 now has a higher minimum damage but better bullet penetration, much better range and a, but a low fire rate than its counterpart in COD 4 Modern Warfare. It is the default handgun used for the last stand perk. While using ADS, the M9 recoils side to side and upwards. Because of this, it is nearly impossible to fire accurately at range, unless it is fired slowly, letting the recoil settle. However, at close range, the player can fire as quickly as possible without any worry. It is worth mentioning that this also has the highest capacity of all pistols. The next handgun is the Desert Eagle. It is modeled after the IMI Desert Eagle Mark 19. In single player, it is the sidearm of arms dealer Alejandro Rojas' assistant in the Brazilian militia. Surprisingly, quite few Americans, most notably Corporal Dunn, use this gun as their preferred sidearm, despite real rangers never having the Desert Eagle issued to them. In fact, the Desert Eagle has never been issued to as a standard sidearm by any military whatsoever, having the only ever been used by Poland's JW Grom Premier Special Forces Unit and Portugal's elite special operations group police unit in very limited service. In multiplayer, it is unlocked at level 26 and is the final handgun you unlock in the multiplayer. 
It has a capacity of 7 rounds and just like the 44 Magnum, 100 kills are required to unlock the tactical knife and no suppressor or extended mags are available. One major flaw about this handgun is the misaligned sights. This can be fixed with the tactical knife attachment. The final handgun is the M1911-45. It is the same handgun used from Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. It closely resembles a Springfield Arm Reloaded 1911. This weapon only appears in the single player. It is only usable in the museum bonus mission. Its appearance is more story than gameplay important. Some ghillie snipers and FSB troops are seen with it holstered, although they never use them intend to use a USP-45. One militia member also carries it during a cutscene. As said, the M1911-45 is only useful in the museum bonus level. It has a capacity of 7 rounds. It possesses a bug in its reload animation. When emptied, there is a noticeable pause for a few seconds before the reload animation plays out. In multiplayer, when the player is using a sniper rifle as their primary weapon on the arctic or desert type maps, the M1911 will appear in either the player's holster or on their belt, even though it is not physically used. The first available machine pistol is the PP-2000. As the name says, it is modeled after the PP-2000. In single player, despite being a rare example of a modern Russian firearm in the original Modern Warfare trilogy, it is only ever used by the Russian paratroopers and Makarov's ultra-nationalists as a backup sidearm, most, most notably in the injured last stand state. Interestingly, like the Glock 17, the enemies fire the weapon in semi-auto in last stand, and the enemies will usually discharge a few rounds when they are shot in last stand. The PP-2000 can be equipped with assorted sights, scopes, and accessories, including a thermal sight exclusive to the level the only easy day was yesterday. In multiplayer, the weapon is unlocked at level 4 when you unlock the Create a Class feature. It is also available in the Riot Control default class with a Kimbo. It has a capacity of 20 rounds and 40 with extended mags. It is an all-around effective weapon in multiplayer due to its high rate of fire and low recoil. The weapon's only drawback is its 20 round magazine. Other than that, it's a really, really great weapon to use, and it will not let you down. The next machine pistol is the G18. It is modeled after the real life Glock 17. Although it is called the G18, referred to the select fire Glock 18 manufactured by the same company, it has no selector switch and the frame is olive drab, which is only featured on their semi-automatic designs. It is a third generation Glock, but modeled without any finger grooves. The magazine release is also missing. The rear sight is a fictional hybrid. It features both the factory standard Glock white square U notch, as well as two, dot, two white dots like on a three dot aftermarket Glock sight. In single player, the G18 is used by the Brazilian militia, Task Force 1 for 1, Wounded Shadow Company soldiers if they are in last stand, and on occasion, Middle Eastern Op 4. It is unlocked in level 22 in multiplayer. The weapon has a capacity of 33 rounds and 50 with extended max. This weapon has a high rate of fire, moderate recoil, but it is possible to utilize the recoil to get headshots. When paired with akimbo and extended mag attachments, it is especially accurate and deadly, and it is effective sidearm. The next machine pistol is the M93 Rafika. It is a mock-up of the Beretta 93R. 
It is a Beretta semi-automatic pistol converted to resemble and function like a Beretta 93R. Real 93Rs have a frame-mounted safety and a more angular slide, all in which the game model lacks. It seems likely that the developers took the base 92SB model and added the 93R parts to it and made it shoot 3 round bursts. It is attached with a skeletal stock and what looks like an attachment rail for the flashlight stash LAM. The end game model has an extended magazine but still only holds 15 rounds in single player, though in multiplayer it holds a more appropriate 20 rounds and 30 rounds with extended mags. In single player, it can be found in the armory in the Gulag, and in the basement armory in Loose Ends, and in the museum level. It is unlocked in multiplayer at level 38, and benefits from low recoil, high damage, fast reload times, and instantaneous ADS. The M93 Rafika has the best damage profile of any machine pistol. At any range of 12.5 meters, the M93 Rafika will deal 40 damage per bullet, needing 3 shots or 1 burst to kill. I might want to add that it's also my favorite machine pistol to use in the game. The final machine pistol is the TMP. It is modeled after the Brugger and Thomet MP9. The weapon features a scope rail, an olive lower receiver, ghost ring sights, and an unused side rails. In single player, it is used by the Middle Eastern Op 4, Russian Airport Security Police, Makarov's Ultranationalist, and the Shadow Company, and it is often dual wielded. In single player, the TMP has an incorrect capacity of, tw of 32 rounds, while in multiplayer it has a correct capacity but small 15 round magazine, but it can be increased with to 25 with the extended mags attachment. It has low recoil and great accuracy when aiming down its sights. It is unlocked at level 58 in multiplayer, making it the final machine pistol unlocked, but it is un hugely unpopular on account of its absurdly small magazine size, high unlock rank, poor hip fire accuracy in favor of other, better performer and easier acquire machine pistols. Although of Swiss origin, the use of the Broker and Thaumann MP9 used by the Russian airport security during the no Russian level is correct as it is in use by the FSB Alpha Counter-Terrorist Unit and by the Russian law enforcement in real life. The first shotgun in the game is the Spaz-12. It is modeled after the Frankie Spaz-12. It is shown with the stock unfolded, which is used in pump action mode only. In single player, it is used by the Russian military, Shadow Company, and Task Force 141 with usually no attachments. It's a bit of an odd choice to say the least, as it was never issued by any military force and went out of production in the year 2000. Weirdly, the bolt is animated to cycle as the shotgun is fired, visible when aiming down sights, rather than when the player works the pump after the shot. In single player, fired shells can be seen ejecting when the gun cycles, but no shells are seen ejecting in multiplayer. In multiplayer, it is first available in the Grenadier default class equipped with a silencer, but can later be unlocked at level 4 when the creator class feature is unlocked. The Spaz-12 is a high damage long range shotgun, it has a capacity of 7 shells in single player, 8 shells in multiplayer, and 16 shells with extended mags, also in multiplayer. The Spaz-12 fires 8 pellets per shot, and at any range of 10 meters it will deal 40 damage per pellet, needing 3 out of the 8 pellets to kill. The Spaz-12's damage is among the best in its class and its range is the best of all secondary shotguns in the game. It is also the only pump action shotgun in the game.
The next shotgun is the AA-12. It is modeled after the AA-12 CQB. It is shown with a custom folding charging handle and custom sights consisting of a rail mounted rear sight and a flip up front sight. It uses an 8 round box magazine using the extended mag attachment in the multiplayer beeps the capacity up to 16, though the magazine model remains unchanged. Real AA-12 magazines options include an 8 round box magazines or 20 or 32 drum magazines. In the single player, it is used by the Russian military but despite being American in origin and the Shadow Company. It also appears outside the obstacle course in the first level once the player has run through it once, and a suppressed version with a heartbeat sensor appears in the Spec Ops mission Acceptable Losses. The AA-12 has an absurdly high rate of fire in single player and Spec Ops at around 650 to 700 rounds per minute, but fires at a more convincingly 400 rounds per minute in multiplayer. In multiplayer, it is unlocked at level 18. The defining aspect of the AA-12 is its fire rate. The AA-12 is fully automatic, firing at 400 rounds per minute. Aside from the Ranger, which can expend both shots and its two barrels immediately, the AA-12 has the best fire rate of any shotgun. This makes the AA-12 far less reliant on its raw raw damage with to win gunfights as the AA-12 can overwhelm enemies through pure volume of fire. This shotgun is definitely a player's go-to choice when it comes down to fire rate and damage because the fact that it's fully automatic, has a high rate of fire, and can clear out a lot of rooms, carrying a lot of enemies. I personally recommend you roll with extended mags when using this weapon, just to make things a little bit easier. The next shotgun is the Striker. It is a hybrid of the Sentinel Arms Striker 12 and the Arms Cell Protect Hybrid. The weapon is hybridized with a large shell deflector and the automatic ejection capabilities of the Arms Cell Protecta. Later models of the Striker 12 do indeed have these protective features, but they also have a rear drum advanced lever, which the game model lacks. Beyond that, the in-game model is odd in a few more ways. The winding key is modeled as a weird spike, while the muzzle is modeled with a strange protrusion. The reload animation depicts the thumb tab to the right of the drum as a drum advanced lever, turning the drum whenever it's pressed. There is no evidence that the thumb tab can be used as a drum advanced lever in reality, and the Striker 12 manual describes the tab to be a button used to open or close the ejection port. The Striker has a capacity of 12 shells and 18 with extended mags. In multiplayer, it is unlocked at level 34. It is a low damage but longer range shotgun. The Striker only fires 6 pellets per shot instead of the usual 8, and any short range of 7.5 meters, it will deal 25 damage per pellet, needing 4 out of the 6 pellets in a shot to hit a secure one shot kill. The next shotgun is the Ranger. It is modeled after the Sears Ranger. This is one of two weapons I will show with a Kimbo on it. The weapon's ADS functionality is replaced, as it can fire both barrels at the same time. Note that while in the game model has the appropriate two triggers, the create a class icon only has one. In single player, it is used by some Brazilian militiamen. The Ranger is shown to be able to eject the spent shells when reloading instead of having to dump them out manually. In multiplayer, the Ranger is unlocked at level 42. Akimbo is the Ranger's most intriguing attachment, and it is commonly considered the main reason why players use the Ranger. Giving access to two shotguns at once doubles the amount of ammo the user has on tap before needing to reload, which is extremely important for the Ranger since its sustained fire capability is next to none. The only weakness the attachment brings is the larger hip fire spread, 
but this downgrade is not major and the effect is more than counteracted by the use of steady aim. The ranger's reload animation is also made 4 seconds long, but the reload cancel speed remains the same, so the reload speed isn't affected at all for those who reload cancel properly. Akimbo not only provides more extra firepower on tap, it highly increases the margin for error with the ranger. The Akimbo Ranger is the most common variant of the weapon. I got this really nice streak while using the Akimbo Rangers in this clip that you're seeing right here. This shotgun is definitely a go-to choice, but it's recommended that you use Akimbo with it as seen here. The next shotgun is the M1014. It is modeled after the Benelli M4 Super 90. It has an olive green finished barrel in receiver and a Surfire triple rail foregrip with an unusable underbarrel flashlight. The barrel also appears with a flat sight plane in first person, which is unusual for the M4. The weapon is modeled with a civilian four shot magazine tube like COD 4. The M1014 has a seven shell capacity in single player the capacity of the military version and has a the correct model capacity in the multiplayer of four shots which can be extended to six shells with extended mags. It is unlocked at level 54 in the multiplayer. In single player it is used by the US military and several Brazilian militiamen in the single player. The player character Roach also starts with the shotgun on the mission takedown. The M1014 fires 8 pellets per shot, and any range of 7.5 meters, the M1014 will deal 40 damage per pellet, needing 3 of the 8 pellets in the shot to hit to secure a kill. The next shotgun is the Model 1887. It is modeled after the Winchester Model 1887 used by Arnold Schwarzenegger in the movie Terminator 2 Judgment Day. It features a shortened barrel, no stock, no trigger guard, and an enlarged lever loop. The Model 1887, like the Ranger, can be dual wielded. It will also be the second and last gun I will show with Akimbo. The Model 1887 is used by the Ultra Nationalists in their armories in loose ends and the Brazilian militia in combat during the Hornet's Nest and in some cases takedown. Like all the weapons, it can also be found in the Museum Bonus Mission. In multiplayer, the Model 1887 is unlocked at level 67, making it the final shotgun unlocked. Prior to multiple balance patches, the Model 1887 was considered to be the most powerful shotgun available. It had the longest range and the option to use a Kimbo, which would not only double its continuous fire rate, but also double the damage that could be shot in a single instant by pulling both triggers simultaneously. The 1.07 patch decreased the range of the Model 1887s drastically. This was the response complaining that the Akimbo shotguns were too powerful. The non-Akimbo Model 1887 also received decreased range. Before the patch, both the single and Model 1887 Akimbos had the same range which was slightly longer than the Spaz 12's range, and after the patch, the single Model 1887 had less. However, a mistake was made during the patch which did not remove range of the blinked FMJ and Akimbo Model 1887 which then prompt to the 1.08 patch, which rectified the mistake. After the 1.07 patch, the Model 1887 received much less use due to the fact that it's outperformed by the Spaz 12, which has better range, damage, and faster fire rate, and it is unlocked much earlier. But to this day, people still love to use this weapon, myself included. It is also my favorite shotgun to use in the game.
The final shotgun is the W1200. It is modeled after the Winchester 1200. The W1200 was first confirmed to be in the game when it was seen in the original trailers for Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Like the M1911, although it is featured in game, it is only usable in the museum bonus level. However, unlike the M1911, it cannot be found on the display case with all the other guns. It is only found on the body of a snow camouflage NPC in the first room, second from the right, although it is sometimes he will carry an M1014 instead. It is never even seen on any other single player level, although it is seen in the cutscene for the intro SSDD in the hands of an FSB operative. It has a capacity of 7 shells. The W1200 has an extremely long range for a shotgun and remains lethal at ranges far beyond those who usually expected for the shotgun. For example, it's capable of killing everyone in the No Russian exhibit from the Contingency exhibit in the museum. The first assault rifle in the game is the M4A1. It is modeled after the Colt M4A1 carbine. The M4A1 is one of the most common weapons in the game. The in-game model features an ARMS-50C-TRSIR system, flip-up PRI front side gas block, ARMS. Dash 40L rear backup iron sights in a triple loop MB sling adapter receiver and plate. The rail covers, lower receiver, stock, and pistol grip are all in tan. A KAC foregrip is fitted in first person only for some reason. The serrations on the back of the pistol grip confirms it to be an 8-2 but is picked it without a finger groove and bottom toe. In single player, it is the first weapon provided by the player. It is primarily used by the U.S. Army Rangers and Task Force 141, including Soap during No Russian. Vladimir Makarov and his terrorist group are also armed with the M4A1. The M4A1 is commonly equipped with an M203 grenade launcher, often alongside other attachments. A suppressed M4A1 is available in the museum mission. The rifles in-game are apparently Colt manufactured with Colt's Prancing Pony logo stamped on the left side of the lower receiver on the in-game model. Curiously, the M4A1 held by Soap in one of the promotional images has a Bushmaster stamp on it. In multiplayer, it is available once the Create a Class feature is unlocked at level 4. It has a capacity of 830 rounds and 45 rounds with extended mags. The M4A1 is one of the most balanced rifles and a fan favorite among many experienced and inexperienced players alike. With its good stats and wide range of attachments, using this weapon should be a breeze. The next available assault rifle is the FAMAS. It is modeled after the FAMAS F1. It only fires in 3 round bursts and incorrectly holds 30 rounds in a 25 round magazine. In single player, it is commonly used by the Russian military and Russian ultranationalists. Some from Oz is, is seen in a unique white tape camo occasionally that can be found in single player. It has an unusual PEQ-15 laser module mounted on the left side. In multiplayer, you can first use this at level 1 in the default glass grenadier. You can later unlock this weapon at level 4 when you unlock the create a class feature. It is the second of two assault rifles unlocked after unlocking the Create a Class feature. The FAMAS has a capacity of 30 rounds and 45 with extended mags. The FAMAS is one of the best assault rifles to use in the game. With its 3 round burst killing a player in 1-2 to two burst, high accuracy and range, this weapon will definitely pack a punch on the battlefield.
The next assault rifle is the Scar H. It is modeled after the FN Scar H CQC. The Scar H appears in Modern Warfare 2 as a high damage, low rate of fire assault rifle. The end game model is an older second generation model with a straight cheek rest on the stock. Its rear sights is chopped down and the iron sights have an Infinity Ward trademarks. It is also mounted backwards. In multiplayer, it correctly holds 20 rounds per magazine, while in single player it holds 30, which is the amount the extended mags has in the multiplayer. It can be assumed that similar to the FNFAL, all Scar Ages in the single player are equipped with extended magazine attachments. Its light beige coloration it suggests it might have been referenced from some airsoft example, such as the ones made by Cybergun or VFC. In single player, it is one of the primary rifles of Task Force 141, US Army Rangers, and the Shadow Company Soldiers. A unique variant with a foregrip can be found in the single player mission SSDD and the Spec Ops mission The Pit. In multiplayer, its kill icon in the kill feed is also shown with a vertical foregrip, despite the set attachment being unavailable for the SCAR in multiplayer. The next assault rifle is the TAR-21. It is modeled after the IMI Tavor TAR-21. In single player, the TAR-21 is used by Russian soldiers and Task Force 141, almost always used with some kind of optical sight or scope. Its kill icon is always shown with a holographic sight. It can be equipped with a Mars sight. This unique sight does appear in the multiplayer and can be equipped by equipping the red dot sight. In multiplayer, it is unlocked at level 20. It has a capacity of 30 rounds and 45 rounds with extended max. At any range of 37.5 meters, the TAR-21 will deal 40 damage per bullet, needing 3 shots to kill. At any range past 50 meters, the TAR-21 will deal 30 damage per bullet, needing 4 shots to kill. The TAR-21 has a 3 shot kill range of 45 meters. I found the TAR-21 to be pretty good, especially in this game which this free-for-all game I actually won, so enjoy the gameplay since I have no nothing else to say about this gun. The next assault rifle is the FAL. It is modeled after the FN FAL. The FAL appears in the game equipped with a receiver mounted ARMS 18M21 14. It has the ribbed metal handguard from an STG 58, a ramped rear sight from FAL, and the charging handle and 30 round magazines from DSA Arms SA 58 FAL rifles. The stock is a hybrid between the standard stock and the hump stock. The weapon is locked to semi-auto. Its charging handle is incorrectly animated. Its charging handle is incorrectly animated to reciprocate when firing. In single player, it is commonly used by the Brazilian militia and sometimes by the Middle Eastern Op 4 and the Russian Army. It is used equipped with either a KAC Master Key or an ACOG scope in the single player. In multiplayer, it is a semi-automatic rifle with high damage, high range, and accuracy. It is unlocked at level 28. The 30 round magazine only holds 20 rounds by default and only goes up to 30 rounds with extended mags. The FAL is tied with a Scar H with the smallest magazine capacity in the class, holding just 20 rounds. The FAL starting ammo loadout is 60 rounds. The gun has a standard assortment of an assault rifle attachments on offer. The holographic sight for the FAL increases the FAL's minimum damage in addition to its main function as a sight attachment. The red dot sight on the FAL is misaligned. All other attachments work as expected. 
The next assault rifle is the M16A4. As said, it is modeled after the Colt M16A4. The M16A4 appears in the game as a three round burst assault rifle. In single player, it is seen in the hands of the US Army Rangers and Task Force 141. Like the M4A1, and many of these have an M203 grenade launcher. It is equipped with an IMI Defense MRS-M handguard, which is depicted, depicted with a slightly misplaced and fewer vent holes. Just like in Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare, when the M16 is mounted with optics, the front sight and the gas block are removed. This would render the gun unable to fire automatically after the first shot. The shooter would have to manually load a round into the chamber by racking the bolt, effectively making the gun a bolt action. In multiplayer, it is unlocked at level 40. It has a capacity of 30 rounds and 45 with extended mags. At any short range of 37.5 meters, the M16A4 deals 40 damage, taking 3 shots to kill, or 2 with a headshot. Damage decreases linearly under 15 meters, where the M16A4 drops to 30 damage, needing 4 shots to kill, or 3 shots with headshots. This weapon may not be as good as its Call of Duty 4 counterpart, but it's still a pretty good rifle to use, although I don't see a lot of players using it, at least in the footage that I see here. This is also the second and last burst assault rifle in the game. The next assault rifle is the ACR. It is modeled after the Magpul Masada, actually the name of its successors manufactured by Bushmaster in Remington. It is a Gen 2 Masada characterized by its forward mounted and ambidextrous charging handle. The handle itself is the early version which was seen at the 2007 SHOT Show and can be found on A and K Airsoft versions. The front sight is loosely based on the Masada's front sight, while the rear sight appears to be loosely based on the Magpul MBUS. The rifle also has a Masada handguard with rails attached on the sides and a 10.5 inch barrel and uses 30 round Magpul P mags. In single player, the ACR is commonly used by the Task Force 141 and Shadow Company. It first appears in the mission Cliffhanger, where it is equipped with a suppressor, reflex sight, heartbeat monitor, and a unique arctic camouflage not found in any other weapon. In multiplayer, this weapon is unlocked at level 48. It has an ammo capacity of 30 rounds and 45 rounds with extended mags. The ACR in multiplayer is arguably the best assault rifle to use in the game. It is a fan favorite among many players alike. It is my personal favorite assault rifle to use. With arguably the best stats in the game from its high accuracy to good damage and fire rate, this weapon will never fail to help you. The next assault rifle is the F2000. It is modeled after the FN F2000 Tactical. In single player, the F2000 is used by the Ultra Nationalist, commonly with thermal sights. The F2000 can incorrectly mount the M203 grenade launcher instead of the FN GL1. Despite being a assault rifle, it behaves more like an SMG. It has very high fire rate, substantial recoil, and very low damage without stopping power. Its unpredictable recoil and low damage makes it weak at medium to long ranges, but its rate of fire allows it to excel in close quarters. The F2000 Tactical has a unique red dot sight attachment model based on the 1.6 scope of the original FN F2000, but it differs from the real F2000 scope in that it is mounted at the top of the F2000 Tactical raised Picatinny rails and leaves the rails exposed on the sides. The original F2000 had a lower, shorter rail for mounting the scope that it is completely hidden by the scope shroud. As such, the resultant in-game model of the F2000 Tactical with the Pesuedo F2000 scope is shoddy approximation of the original scoped F2000 and has many differences in detail. The original F2000 is also sh the weapon shown in the F2000 kills icon. In the multiplayer, the F2000 is unlocked at level 60. It has a capacity of 30 rounds and 45 with extended mags. Its creator class image shows the removable forearm pushed back to where the trigger guard would be. Many players call this weapon the, to be the worst assault rifle in the game. To some people, it's either a hit or miss gun.
final assault rifle is the AK-47. It is an AK hybrid. It has a milded receiver of an AK-47, but with a ripped top cover, 90 degree gas block, and front sight block of an AK-74. Additionally, it has one single rivet on... Additionally, it weirdly has a one sight rivet at the bottom rear of the receiver. Its position is somewhat similar to the bottom rivet of a Draco pistol. It is fitted with an LHV-47 railed handguard, an IO Inc. SCOP-0040 scope mount, T6 stock adapter, the Tor iMod stock, and a Sega 12 breaching muzzle brake. It feeds from Finnish AK polymer magazines. Overall, it appears that the whole build has been based on some airsoft set, like the Jeep AMP AK Tactical Conversion Kit, which contains replicas of the listed above items. In single player, it is used by almost all enemy factions, including Russian military, ultra-nationalist, and the Brazilian militia. Most AK-47s are seen with an Arctic or Desert camouflage, although some in the level loose ends have a digital or woodland camouflage. It is the final weapon unlocked in multiplayer, and you unlock it at level 70. It has the capacity of 30 rounds and 45 with extended mags. Its depiction is widely inaccurate for the Russian army and even Makarov's ultranationalists, as people would more likely use the AK-74M or possibly some rifles like the AK-100 series. At the time of the game's making, the Russians weren't considering modernizing the old AKs, let alone using aftermarket US-made accessories. However, Kalashnikov Concern introduced the universal upgrade package for AKs in 2015, which interestingly almost coincides with the game's 2016 setting. The first submachine gun is the MP5K. It is modeled after the Heckler & Koch MP5K equipped with a custom rail interface system and a threaded barrel. In single player, it is used by the Brazilian Militia, Middle Eastern Op 4, Rangers, Task Force 141, Russian Internal Troops, FSB, and some Russian soldiers dash or slash ultranationalist. It comes with a four grip in multiplayer, but in single player this is absent, which presumably makes sense to somebody. The real SD suffix is used by the Heckler & Koch for their integrally suppressed MP5 variants, which in game is not. In cases where the suppressed MP5 is paired with a red dot sight, as seen in the campaign levels, the enemy of my enemy, and just like old times, and in several missions of Spec Ops, the weapon is more appropriately labeled MP5K Silence Red Dot. In multiplayer, the MP5K is unlocked at level 4 when you unlock the Creative Class feature. It is one of two SMGs you unlock once you unlock the Creative Class feature. It has a capacity of 30 rounds and 45 with extended mags. It is an all-around good SMG to use, though many players prefer to use the UMP45 over this weapon. The next submachine gun is the UMP-45. It is modeled after the Heckler & Koch UMP-45. Like the MP5K, Picatinny rails were added to the weapon. In single player, it is used by the Russian police, Russian military, Shadow Company, and Task Force 141. In multiplayer, it can be used at level 1 in the default class first recon. It is later unlocked at level 4 once you unlock the creative class feature. It is the last of two SMGs to be available after unlocking the Creator Class feature. It incorrectly holds 32 rounds in multiplayer by default and 48 with extended mags, but correctly holds 25 rounds in single player. It is insanely popular online due to suffering a negligible damage decrease when suppressed. The, interestingly, the front sight is removed when optics are attached, which is the only possible way of completely chopping it off. A more appropriate alternative Russian-made firearm in this category would be the PP-19 Bison, the
the PP90 M1 or the PP1901 Vitiaz submachine guns, which are used by the military and police forces in the Russian Federation, including the various Spetsnaz units and counter-terrorist and law enforcement units. The next submachine gun is the Vector. It is modeled after the prototype TDI Vector, fitted with a Gen 1 stock and using Chris 25 plus extended Glock magazines. In single player, it is used by the Russian troops, Shadow Company, and occasionally by the Task Force 141 and Brazilian militiamen. It is highly incorrect for the Russian ultranationalists to use the TDI Vector as the, a personal defense weapon, as it is a weapon of US origin. A more like alternative would be the PP-2000 featured in the game, or the SR-2 Verisk. It is generally fitted with a reflex sight and uses a suppressor in some campaign levels. Its default finish is a two-tone black and tan finish like the real-life prototype, but in just like old times, Soap's Vector has a unique black finish as well as equipping an ACOG and suppressor simultaneously. As with some other in-game weapons, the iron sights have Infinity War trademarks on them. In multiplayer, the Vector is unlocked at level 12. It has a capacity of 30 rounds and 45 with extended max. The Vector has the lowest damage per bullet of any weapon in multiplayer. At any short range of 19 meters, the Vector will do 25 damage per bullet, needing 4 shots to kill. Damage decreases linearly until 25 meters. At any range past 25 meters, the Vector will deal 20 damage per bullet, needing 5 hits to kill. The next submachine gun is the P90. It is modeled after the FN P90TR. In single player, it is used by the Russians and US Shadow Company members. In multiplayer, the P90 is unlocked at level 24. The P90 is a popular choice for the same reason as in real life. It is compact, has a large magazine, has low recoil, does good damage, and has a high rate of fire. It has the highest ammo capacity in the game, having 50 rounds and 70 rounds with extended mags. It is also a very good at hip firing, which is done by many players that are using this weapon along with the steady aim perk, making the P90 a more popular choice among players. It is another questionable weapon of choice for the Russian army. A more accurate choice would be the PP2000 already in the game, or the SR2 Veresk. Overall, this weapon is just as good as its Call of Duty 4 counterpart. The final submachine gun is the Mini Uzi. It is modeled after the IMI Mini Uzi. In single player, it is used by the Brazilian militiamen, Middle Eastern Op 4, and rarely by Makarov's ultranationalists in the mission Enemy of My Enemy. Near the end of the game, the player gets to fire an Uzi during the boat chase. Like in Call of Duty 4, it is incorrectly shown with a reciprocating charging handle. In multiplayer, it is the final SMG you unlock in the game, unlocked at level 44. It has a capacity of 32 rounds and 48 with extended mags. The Mini Uzi has a great rate of fire to offset poor, the poor damage it has. The Mini Uzi has the second highest fire rate in its class at 950 RPM, just a smidge faster than the P90. The first LMG in the game is the L86 LSW. It is modeled after the L86A1 light support weapon, identified as the A1 by its round charging handle. The weapon is modified with a long L85 handguard, a barrel mounted carrying handle from the M240, and a small Picatinny rail on each side of the receiver. The weapon uses a Chinese MDG3 120 round drum mag that only holds 100 rounds, 200 rounds with extended mags in gameplay. It appears only once throughout the single player campaign, during the defense of the safe house in the level loose ends. It also appears in the special ops mission Escape Takedown. In multiplayer, it is first available at level 1 in the default class Overwatch. 
It can later be unlocked at level 4 once you unlock the Creator class feature. It holds the distinction of being the weapon with the highest damage per second with stopping power in the game. This is offset by the obstructive iron sights and high recoil unless a grip is attached. The kill feed icon of the weapon shows an L85 with an SUSAT, likely indicating that the L86 LSW was supposed to be the L85 at one point during development. Overall, this weapon is not really too bad to use, although the iron sights can be a pain in the butt sometimes. I recommend you use a red dot sight or some sort of optic in order to fix this problem. I actually hit this really nice split guac feed that you see right here. The next LMG is the RPD. As the name says, it is modeled up to the RPD. In single player, it is used by the Brazilian militia, Middle Eastern Op 4, and some Russian troops. The latter is incorrect as while the RPD is Russian in origin, it was phased out during the 1960s in favor of the PKM. In multiplayer, it is unlocked at level 4 when you unlock the Creator Class feature. The RPD fires fully automatic with a rate of fire of 705 rounds per minute. It has an ammo capacity of 100 rounds and 200 with extended mags. The RPD will deal 40 damage at all ranges, netting a 3 shot kill or a 2 shot kill to the head with 2 headshots. The RPD also has a high penetration power. In hardcore game types, the RPD is a 1 shot kill at all ranges, making it quite an effective weapon in that game mode. The RPD's damage with stopping power equipped is boosted to 56 damage per bullet, needing 2 shots to kill at all ranges. A single headshot from the RPD with stopping power applied will deal 78 damage. The RPD has recoil values of 70 to the left and 70 to the right. The RPD has no downwards recoil values and 2 upwards recoil values. Overall, this weapon is okay to use, but it's mainly overshadowed by the other LMGs, such as the AUG HBAR. The next LMG is the MG4. It is modeled after the Heckler & Koch MG4. It is used by the Russian military and the Shadow Company in single player. In multiplayer, the MG4 is unlocked at level 16. It has an ammo capacity of 100 rounds and 200 with extended mags. It possesses a moderately high rate of fire and sub par damage, which can be buffed with stopping power. But it is accurate and has a slow recoil. Just like the RPD, it is an overall okay weapon to use, but not a lot of players use it, at least on my end. Players will likely use the AUG H-Bar over this weapon. The next LMG is the AUG H-Bar. It is modeled after the Steyr AUG H-Bar T. In multiplayer, the AUG H-Bar LMG takes the form of a correct Steyr AUG H-Bar in contrast to the single player where it appears as the AUG A2. It is specifically modeled after the H-Bar T variant used in the designated marksman rifle roll as it has the RIS rail. It is equipped with an unusable bipod, a barrel mounted carrying handle from the M240, a 42 round magazine, and a 24.4 inch barrel. 
The weapon strangely lacks a, the standard AUG foregrip by default, though equipping a foregrip attachment reattaches it. The weapon is unlocked at level 32, and it is a fan favorite among many Modern Warfare 2 players, myself included. True to its nature, the AUG H bar functions more like an assault rifle than an LMG. It has the fastest reload, has good accuracy and high damage, but suffers from recoil at long distances unless a grip is used. The final available LMG is the M240. It is modeled after the FN M240B. In single player, it is used by the US Army Rangers, Task Force 141, Shadow Company, and Makarov's Terrorist. It is often seen equipped with a heartbeat sensor. In Special Ops, the enemy juggernauts wield the M240 machine gun. The M240 is depicted with a bottom mounted 100 round belt box. This is impossible in reality for several reasons. For one, the M240 does not have an attachment point for an ammo box to attach to on its underside. The M240 is typically issued with belt boxes that are fully separate from the gun. While the US Army issues a soft M240 belt bag that is attached to the side of the M240. Secondly, such an attachment point would block the M240's casing ejection port, located on the bottom where the in-game belt box is attached. The in-game belt box itself is an M249 belt box with groups resembling a PKM belt box. The M240 deals the lowest damage out of all the machine guns, despite being chambered for the largest round, but constipates it for having the highest fire rate in its class. It suffers from substantial recoil, restricting it to short and medium range. In multiplayer, the M240 is the final LMG you unlock in the game. It is unlocked at level 52. The first sniper rifle available is the Intervention. It is modeled after the Cheyenne Tactical M200 Intervention. The Intervention is the only usable bolt action rifle in the game. It has an unusable AN-PEQ2 laser unit mounted on the Picatinny rail just forward of the scope, which disappears when an ACOG scope is used. In multiplayer, it is unlocked at level 4 once the Creative Class feature is unlocked. While its magazine size is a mere 5 rounds, 10 with extended mags, the intervention deals incredibly high damage, making it a deadly sight in multiplayer. The depiction of the intervention within Modern Warfare 2 propelled the weapon into relative infamy. 
While the weapon itself was never deemed as overpowered, a number of factors displayed in this game specifically the overuse of the weapon in multiplayer, its distinctive sounds and animations, the use of hit marker, and the general stereotype of Call of Duty generally being enjoyed by loud skill lacking Fox MLG tryhards has made the intervention a staple of montage parodies along with the infamous acts of no scoping and quick scoping. The popularity of the weapon has allowed the intervention to return in four other Call of Duty games. Call of Duty Online, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, Call of Duty Modern Warfare Remastered, and the rebooted Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. I really don't need to say anything else about this weapon because it's pretty much the most popular weapon in the multiplayer. The next sniper rifle is the Barrett 50 Cal. It is modeled after the Barrett M82A1. It has a shortened barrel, though it is not as short as the M82 CQ. It has a Mr. Uke sticker on the scope cover. The weapon is incorrectly depicted with ejection port openings on both sides of the receiver. In single player, during the level of their own accord, an emplaced M82A1 with a variable zoom thermal sight is used by the Russian snipers covering the mall. It is temporarily commanded by Ramirez and his squad to take out enemy soldiers firing on evac helicopters with javelins. In multiplayer, it is available at level 2 in the default class Scout Sniper. You can unlock this later at level 4 once the Creator Class feature is unlocked. It has a capacity of 10 rounds and 15 with its Cinemax. Oddly, it has worse overall stats than the M21 EBR or the WA-2000. Amusingly, the weapon can be fired nearly as quickly as the trigger can be tapped, with surprisingly little recoil for dumping 1050 BMG rounds in under a second. The next sniper rifle is the WA-2000 or WA-2000. It is modeled after the Walther WA-2000. In single player, it is used by Russian snipers in loose ends and by Shadow Company troops in the level Enemy of My Enemy. Highly inaccurate for both given the WA-2000's limited production run and exurbent price tag. While it only holds 6 rounds, it is very accurate and has low recoil. The version used in single player holds an incorrect 10 rounds, and it has a restricted fire rate. In multiplayer, it is unlocked at level 36. The WA-2000 will deal 70 damage at any range and deals 50% more damage on bullets than the hit in the head, neck, or upper torso. The WA-2000 has the same one-shot kill area or without stopping power. Stopping power is the only relevant if using the silencer on the WA-2000, which it will return to the WA-2000's one-shot kill area back to normal. The gun also has a high penetration power. It fires semi-automatic with an uncapped fire rate. This allows for a maximum fire rate of 1200 rounds per minute.
The next sniper rifle is the M14 M21 EBR. It is modeled after the MK14 Mod 1 EBR. In single player, it appears as the standard weapon for Task Force 141 snipers, and it is referred to as the M14 EBR, the US Army designation. This seems to be the weapon of choice for Captain McTavish. It is the last sniper rifle to be unlocked in the multiplayer, unlocked at level 56, where it is listed incorrectly as the M21 EBR, likely to remind the players of the actual M21 in Modern Warfare. It has a capacity of 10 rounds and 15 rounds with extended mags. The M21 is a semi-automatic. Like all other like other semi-automatic weapons in the game, the M21 EBR lacks a fire cap. As such, the M21 EBR can fire as fast as the user can pull the trigger, which is up to 1200 rounds per minute. No limit on the fire cap allows the M21 user with a quick trigger finger to lay a lot of fire. The M14 EBR appears in the Special Ops mission Evasion, where it is the starting weapon equipped with a silencer, Suspension, where it is in the initial area, Body Count, and Homeland Security, where it is in the initial area, in Joe's Diner, and on the roof of Nate's restaurant equipped with a thermal scope, and Acceptable Losses, where it is in, in the initial area equipped with a silencer. An unscoped M14 EBR can be found in the Spec Ops mission Breach and Clear, though it has the same exact scope zoom level when it is equipped with an ACOG. It is the only time the player gets to use it with iron sights. The final sniper rifle used in the game is the Dragonov. It is modeled after the SVD Dragonov. It is only featured in the single player campaign and spec ops used by Russian ultranationalists and Brazilian militiamen. It can be found with winter camouflages in the snow levels and woodland camouflage and loose ends and the enemy of my enemy. The weapon has a capacity of 10 rounds. A poster of the SVD Dragonov is seen in the multiplayer map Salvage in a small house, along with posters of the Makarov PM and AKM. The next weapon is the Riot Shield. The Riot Shield is not modeled after any Riot Shield, so here's a real life Riot Shield in comparison. The Riot Shield is used in various enemies in certain parts of the campaign. Its first appearance is in No Russian, when the FSB arrived to counter Makarov's terrorist group. In multiplayer, it is unlocked at level 4 once the create a class feature is unlocked. The shield will deflect all enemy bullets, but the impacts will leave large cracks across the front of the shield until the game reloads the image. The shield could greatly reduce explosive damage if pointed in the right direction, enabling the player to survive grenades and claymores with little trouble. In some ways, it makes Blast Shield unnecessary, however any hostile Semtexes that stick to the user is lethal. In addition, it renders the user immune to the effect of the stun grenades in front. Similar to the Blast Shield, but not against flashbangs, players hold the right shield cannot go prone, knife, or place a breaching charge.
The first attachment I'll be going over is the M203. It is modeled after the Airsoft M203 grenade launcher, distinguishable by its distinctive RIS mount and the lack of a trigger card. It is the standard grenade launcher for every assault rifle except the AK-47. It features a new firing sound and unlike in the multiplayer of the previous installment, the M203 does not prevent the use of Perk 1. In multiplayer, it is available at level 1 and it is equipped in the FAMAS on the default class Grenadier. Once you unlock the created class feature at level 4, the grenade launcher attachment will already be available for you. It will also be the first attachment available for all assault rifles. The majority of servers and players look down upon the use of grenade launchers as they are extremely effective and require minimal finesse to attain kills. It has earned the nickname NoobTube and is referred to as such almost exclusively, even by players who use the attachment. I really don't need to say anything else since pretty much everyone knows what this is. The next attachment is the GP25. It is modeled after the GP30 grenade launcher. You can only use the GP25 on the AK-47. The GP25 acts just like the M203, a powerful grenade launcher attachment. In multiplayer, you can use this weapon by equipping the grenade launcher attachment for the AK-47, meaning you'll have to be on level 70 in order to use it. Like in COD 4, a Western 40mm grenade stands in for the Russian VOG 25 40mm grenade and the player is incorrectly shown flicking the launcher downwards to eject the spent grenade casing upon firing the weapon, even though the real VOG 25 grenades are caseless. A fully Western 40mm grenade stands in for the spent grenade casing. The next attachment is the shotgun. It is modeled after the Knight's Armament Master Key. As the name says, it is a mounted shotgun attachment. The shotgun attachment is only equipable on assault rifles. It is frequently seen mounted to rifles as an underslug shotgun like the M203. It is mostly attached to the FNFAL or SCAR H assault rifles, but is sometimes seen on other weapons. The shotgun carries an impossible 7 shells in single player and a more realistic but still one extra 4 shells in multiplayer. In multiplayer, it is unlocked for the assault rifles after 20 grenade launcher kills. Where this attachment really lacks is range. You will need to be really close to the enemies in order to kill them in one shot. The shotgun attachment is not a popular choice among players and is recommended you really avoid using this attachment. The first launcher is the AT-4 or AT-4HS. It is modeled after the Saab Beaufort's Dynamic M136 AT-4. The AT-4 can be seen and used during the mission's team player, the only easy day was yesterday, of their own accord and just like old times. It is referred to in the pickup prompt as simply AT-4 and is only capable of free fire in campaign mode. In multiplayer, it is known as the AT-4HS. It is the first rocket launcher to be unlocked at level 4, and is also part of the default class Overwatch. Unlike in the campaign, the player does not discard the apparatus after firing the rocket. It is capable of both free fire and lock on, although it does not do much damage as a stinger or javelin to any aircraft. It does the same amount of damage as the RPG-7 against infantry, although with a smaller blast radius only one, and only one rocket. However, it is far more accurate, especially at range, and can be lock-on fired. Like the others, however, the player needs to be aiming down the sights in order to fire.
The next launcher is the Thumper. It is modeled after the M79 grenade launcher. In game it can be found in the Hornet's Nest and in some Spec Ops missions. It is available as a secondary weapon in the multiplayer. In the former two game modes it can be hip fired, but in attempting to do so in multiplayer will bring the sights into picture and fire the shot, similar to the RPG or AT4. In multiplayer it is unlocked at level 14. It only holds one grenade at a time. You can hold two grenades in multiplayer, hence the X2 in the multiplayer name. However, in single player and spec ops, you can hold up to 20 grenades. The thumper acts similar to the grenade launcher attachment, but unlike the attachment, you can aim with the thumper. The next launcher is the Stinger. It is modeled after the FIM-92 Stinger. The weapon can only be fired when locked onto helicopters or aircraft, hence the reason why I couldn't test fire it. It only fires one rocket before reloading and lacks the folding IFF antenna on the right side of the weapon. However, this is not actually required to lock onto a target and fire the weapon. Other than this, I have nothing else to say about it. The next launcher is the Javelin. It is modeled after the FGM-148 Javelin. I didn't record much gameplay of it so I'm going to keep it short and simple. Like the Stinger, it has a lock-on feature. But unlike the Stinger where you can only lock on to aircraft, the Javelin is able to lock on to things on the ground. You unlock this weapon at level 50. Enjoy the rest of the gameplay since I have nothing else to say about it. The final launcher and final weapon I'll be showing you in the showcase is the RPG-7. As the name says, it is modeled after the real-life RPG-7. In single player, it is used by all enemy forces. In multiplayer, it is the final launcher you unlock in the game, unlocked at level 65. It is one of three launchers that come with two shots. The RPG-7 remains extremely inaccurate at long ranges, where it tends to curve off course though it is still far more accurate than it used to be in Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. Since it has an unguided rocket, flares from the killstreak aircraft will not be affected by the projectile. 